Often adorned in his signature fedora, Cyrus Shepard is one of the most recognizable faces in the SEO industry. Cyrus joined me for some day drinking on Suds and Search earlier this summer to talk about a bunch of topics in SEO. He's the owner of Zippy, an SEO agency he founded in 2018. Cyrus formerly served as lead SEO at Moz and remains extremely active at Moz to this day. He frequently appears on Whiteboard Fridays and continues to publish blogs on the Moz site. In most years, Cyrus MCs or co MCs MozCon, the biggest conference in SEO. I started our conversation asking about MozCon and the challenges of MCing a virtual event. What I like best about Cyrus is that he's an excellent teacher. Over the course of his career, he's written guides and then presentations that give SEOs just really useful advice. Our conversation is no exception. This interview is packed with actionable SEO tips. Grab something cold to drink and join me for a conversation with one of the most sought after SEO experts in the world, Cyrus Shepard. We're gonna talk about the best ways to perform keyword research, the proper way to prepare an SEO report, a novel approach to evaluating keyword rankings, and I'm gonna ask him about the time he wore a toupee for two weeks. Cyrus Shepard, welcome to Sudden Search. This is hey. a really big gift for us. How, hey, how's Mark. everything going? Good. Thank you, Mark. Uh, happy to be here today. I'm, I, uh, I was kicked out of my house. I'm on my porch uh, drinking a nice Chicago beer. Uh, I got to warn you, I am not a daytime drinker and uh, it's the time difference. It's a little earlier in the day. So this, th I don't know how this is going to go. Anything could happen. That, that's what makes it exciting though, Cyrus. Yeah. I think yeah. that's, that's, that's just really going to take this episode to the next level. So I'll give you a virtual cheers. I'm having an uh, Apex Predator. For oh, me. nice. A, my, a brewery here called Off Color, Clank, um, and I have so many things to talk to you about. One of the one of the things that's come up is MozCon this year is virtual. You've, yeah, you've emceed it several times. I don't know if you're you're always the MC, but you're going to be an MC of a virtual conference. This is like the biggest conference in our industry. Um, what challenges? What can people expect? What can you tell us as kind of a sneak peek? Yeah, so uh, MozCon. Uh... I was my very first SEO conference uh, back in 2011. I, I'd never been to a conference before, and they asked me to MC it. They didn't. They didn't know I'd never been to an SEO conference. So uh, that was my first experience on stage, and I've haven't MC'd every year, but I've MC'd most years. Uh, the last few years, along with Brittany Muller, who is awesome and amazing. The amazing, yeah. And she is also co emceeing with me this year. Uh, the challenge is, you know, MozCon is the, the, the granddaddy, the Super Bowl, the World Cup of SEO conferences. And our challenge this year, there's a lot of free uh, conferences online. We couldn't do MozCon for free. We wanted to. We had a lot of pre-existing expenses. The challenge is, how do we make sure it's the best SEO conference again while, yeah. while remaining virtual. So our speaker selection process is insane. It's probably the toughest uh, conference to get a speaker invite from in the industry. And I, th I think that saves us a little bit and, and makes the bar higher. So we've got two days planned. We've got a lot of people working on it, probably more work than has gone into any virtual conference uh, to date. So we're hoping for the best. Well, it's a truly, I mean, truly amazing list of speakers who are gonna be there. Uh, from across the board, and I'll be tuning in. I'm really excited for it. So, yeah, I, I am too. I, I'm excited for uh, Brian Dean back back Linko, very popular, sometimes controversial figure. He doesn't do SEO conferences at all, uh, okay. but he agreed to do MozCon. Uh, so I'm, I'm ex and so many so many other Will Reynolds, uh, Brittany Muller again. So many great people joining us. Michael King, Andy Cressidina, yeah. and Andy yep. Cressidina, a friend of mine from across yep. the tracks. Yes, here. yes. So I told you about the area we're in. He's literally like right across the train tracks from us. So Yeah, that's cool. Um, well, there's a, a recent announcement in April. Moz came out with new keyword research guide. You, yep. uh, I think, took a big part in that and, and authored the announcement for it and then did a whiteboard Friday about it. And I'd like to talk a little bit about that. How did you, why, why, why did you decide to even do a keyword research guide? I think that would be a good place to start well, it's, it's kind of funny. A lot of people have done keyword research guides. Uh, Nick Eubanks, a uh, friend of ours, you know, kind of the master of keyword research. Uh, one thing that Moz, if you know the history of Moz, one thing that 
we've always striven to do is be a platform for all of SEO. It's not just yeah. Moz. It's we we want to be the voice for the entire industry. And so one thing that we haven't been very good at traditionally is showing people how to use our tools. Uh, okay. So, hey, we'll show you how to do keyword research as long as we don't mention that, hey, we also sell. So the, and, we're, and we realized recently we're doing a disservice to the people who want to use Moz because the Moz's keyword research tool is awesome. It's, it's got it great is. volume. It's got uh, over 500 million keywords. Uh, it can stand up with any keyword research tool in the industry. But people, we, were, we weren't doing a very good job of showing people actually how to succeed and use that. So I wanted to create kind of a canonical experts guide uh, to show, you know, taking all that I've learned over the last 10 years and showing people step by step how to go through some of those processes and maybe uncover some things that they didn't know before. So overall, it's been great. Oh, it's outstanding. And I, I think after you watch this video, check out your whiteboard, Friday, your whiteboard Friday and get into the guide. It's yep. excellent. It's got a bunch of contributor quotes, which are all excellent. Our, yeah. Our and, and if, efforts in there. So that's, and, that was very nice. Yeah, yes, he is. Greg, Greg is awesome. He awesomely contributed. And if you run an SEO software company, take note, once we launched that guide, uh, we saw more people using the tools, staying longer, and it's an indication that our customers are getting more success. So, and that's ultimately what we want. So, yeah, customer education, no matter what industry you're in, it's always a win. Awesome, and one of the things you, you say is it's it's not merely the tool, it is really the process and using the tool and, and, yeah. and, and part and parcel of a process. And then you take us through, uh, you know, more in depth on the guide, but on the Whiteboard Friday, it's kind of like three main steps that, that you go through. I'd like to go into those, but first, what, why does that, uh, why did you feel the need to make that distinction that it's not just the tool, it's, it's a process that that's really yeah. what it has to be about? Well, I, it, it, born out of a little frustration from, <laughs> uh, you know, different marketing from different keyword tools, there's, you know, there's a dozen great uh, keyword research tools out there, uh, including, you know, our direct competitors, SEMrush, a ARES, uh, Keywords Everywhere, the great Chrome extension, uh, I could go on and on and on. And everybody said, hey, use our tool. They don't talk about the process. Uh, yes. I, I like to think you, you could take my process and apply it to SEMrush, apply it to AREFs, and you're going to have a, a good amount of success no matter what tool you use. So uh, a smart SEO, there are so many SEOs out there in even third world countries where they can't afford uh, the price point of Moz or AREFs. But if, they've, if they come in with a good process, a good brain, they can, they can use some of the free options out there and still come away with a good keyword research strategy, so. Well, very cool. So I, I wanna talk about the process that you recommend a little bit, because it's, I think it's, it's very good. And um, you, you come up with a lot of different examples of how to use the tool within it. But um, st the, the first part is to find seed keywords. What are seed keywords for? for uh, seed, yeah, seed keywords are the words that you grow your list from. Uh, and it's interesting today. I was doing I was doing some research for a seed company buy buy seeds online for no plants. Kidding. Yeah. So, <laughs> and it's too good. And uh, you know, so I started with a word uh, online seed company, and I I just Google the results. I pop it in Keyword Explorer, and I start to get my volumes. And I realized that 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 particular keyword has zero volume. No one's looking for it. Got it. So yeah. I so seed keywords is really just about starting to close the gap between what you think you want to rank for and what people are actually searching for. And when you start the process, you often either have no idea or it's a huge misconception. So you got, you have to spend your first, the first part, the first stage of the process, just figuring out what the heck people are starting to search for before you can start to refine it. But I've been there. Yeah. Where you, yeah. you think, you think it's going to be one thing and data tells you a different thing. So. Yeah. Um, the, the next step is to is to do list building, and this is where a tool like Moz's keyword, yeah, uh, keyword research tool really comes in handy. What, where do we go after we've got our seed keywords? How do we build that into a list? Yeah, so one thing I liked, uh, I I kind of got this from uh, Matt Diggity, who's a pretty popular affiliate marketer. Uh, his idea of recursive keyword research, where you try to find every single keyword possible. Uh, right. So once you have a seed keyword, you build out, you start building out your list of all related keywords. And from that, you pull out new seeds and then you go into Google 
and you see who's ranking for that top keyword and you find all the other keywords that they're potentially ranking for. And you just do that recursively again and again and again so that you can discover every opportunity. You may not cover all those keywords, you know, in your strategy because you may come up with thousands and maybe you only have a budget to cover, do a hundred pages or, but yeah, the idea is to find as many as possible. So when you start to filter for opportunities, you have as big as list uh, to work from as, as you can. Awesome. So now I've got a, a huge list. I've got uh, my seed keywords, my, I've built my list and I need to do some competitor analysis to even yeah. build it out even more. Yep. So that, that sounds exciting. Everybody likes competitor analysis. Yeah. How do you do it in, in terms of building out your keyword research? Yeah. So I, I think competitor analysis is the most important part uh, yeah. because your competitors have already done the work and they've already discovered things by accident. So right. if I'm doing, if I'm doing research for my, online seeds, uh, I'm going to find the top companies that are ranking for online seeds and plants. And I'm going to import those URLs into my favorite keyword research tool. And really, there's only three that do this and that that's SEMrush, Arefs and Moz. And uh, I'm going to find all the ranking I'm going to find all the other keywords that they rank for and some of them they're trying to rank for and some of them they rank for accidentally. It doesn't matter. We're going to take that intelligence and we're going to use it. And oftentimes you can find keywords that they rank for that they aren't optimized for. Yes. And those are, that's your opportunity to do it better than them. Uh, so that's where some of the real value comes from. So competitive research is actually just, it's kind of like cheating, but it's my favorite part of the process. I would imagine it's, my client's favorite part of the process too. Yep. They love, love to beat their competition. So, yeah. um, so now, now comes the hard work. And in this, in, there's a section in the guide that, that I really liked, which is about prioritizing and making, yep. this is about using your head now and kind of yep. making decisions. Yep. How do you, and, and using tools to, to make sure you're, you're making good, your, your decision making is based on data, but how do you suggest people prioritize keywords? Yeah, so there's a few standards you want to use for the first and foremost question, does this make sense for my business? Uh, you don't necessarily want to optimize for everything. Is this something I offer? Is this something my customers are interested in? Uh, can I reasonably solve this problem for people looking for this, this question? So relevancy, you know, is, is a no brainer. Uh, second metric that people want to look at is volume. Is anyone actually looking for this? Is it, is it worth, is it worth it for me to create a, page for this or should I just roll it into another page, uh, maybe use it as a supporting keyword. Uh, and the th third big one is difficulty. Can I rank for this keyword? And I can give you a really simple tip uh, to how to figure this out. Different tools have different difficulty rankings. Go into your favorite tool, enter your domain, and look at your number, look at all the keywords you rank number one or number two for and see how difficult they are. In Moz, it's called keyword difficulty. That will give you an idea of your ranking potential. Uh, and so if, if you're trying to go after keywords with extremely high keyword difficulty that are above what you average, average for, you may want to tone that down a little bit and uh, go for keywords that you have a better opportunity of ranking for. Not that you shouldn't try. I mean, I, I, I think it's worth, if you can solve a problem, it's worth creating the content for uh, regardless. But for efficiency's sake, honing in on your keyword difficulty is usually smart. I love it. And so now I, I think this is extremely good. And now you got to do something with all this stuff. So the, ne the next step is actually coming up with a content strategy, which you, you talk a little bit about. Um, how do I take all this good work I just did and actually get something out of it? What's, what's the next step? Yeah, so there's there's a couple processes. Uh, one, you may have a giant list. You've 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 to, you've whittled it down to say maybe your t top twenty pages that you want to create. Uh, you you want to find all your related keywords, and you have this already because you built those lists. You built the list with all the related keywords. So you want to know what your parent terms are, your big terms, and some of your child terms that you can add to the page. One kind of easy way to do this is to, uh, if you're wondering about how to split pages up or if two terms are related or, or similar, is simply Google them. Uh, if, if buy seeds online and buy online seeds, if, if they, those come up with the exact same Google search results, they're the same topic and you can use them interchangeably. If, 
you have two terms and you Google them and the results are very different, you need separate pages for those. Uh, so I, I I'm kind of getting off in the weeds with this question. No, Sorry. No, it's pretty open ended. I, I get it. So um, you know, we're, we're talking about this guide. And again, I think it's great. You guys do these guides that are extremely helpful. Um, a, a lot of SEO talk is about the newest Python craze or, um, you know, yeah. schema or something like that. But the, the other guide I really liked was about reporting and oh, yeah. how, how to do reporting. And that is just like the nuts and bolts of working with clients. Like yeah. you need reports that work. Yeah. And I, uh, that you, you raise, you raise a very, uh, a good topic. You know, we're talking about MozCon. We're talking about the latest Twitter <laughs> craze about Python <laughs> and BigQuery. You know, I, I, I've recognized this for so many years now that we often live in a, in a bubble of expertise on Twitter and the people who create totally. conversations that they're, I follow 250 people. They all follow the same 250 people and they're, they're the best. That said, <laughs> yeah. if you, if you looked at LinkedIn, uh, you know, there's something like over a million people that do some sort of SEO for their job. Uh, and they may not do SEO all day, every day, but they do some part of SEO for their job uh, all the time. Those people aren't the experts on Twitter. They're just trying, they're just trying, they're creating content. They're trying to get it to rank. Uh, and they're, they don't have time to learn Python. Uh, they may not even know what Python is. I mean, I think, I think this is why Moz became such such the behemoth that it is because yeah. it was just like, it's where you start. It's where you get yep. all your fundamental skills. The beginner guide yep. is like mandatory for every new SEO. And it, you're still doing this kind of thing where it's just like, this is the job. Why don't we make some content around that rather than the newest craze? Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And Pi Python, Python is awesome. It, I love it. It, it's great. Yeah. You know, these, yeah. these advanced things are, are really cool, but so much of it only <laughs> applies to such a small portion of the industry. Uh, when really people just like, Hey, how can I get a few more customers in my door? And when we're serving clients, man, just focusing on that, it, the end result. Uh, I, I think the people who focus on that are honestly the most successful. All right, so I want to uh, I want to try some things with you. By the way, I think I'm doing the heavy lifting on the beer drinking. I'm not seeing oh, you. Uh... I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm sorry. It's it's uh, it, it's it's getting lighter. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so I want to try this on you. So some things for reporting. Yeah. Um, only include good news. That's that's something we should do, right? No, no. <laughs> of course, I'm Be kidding. Uh, yeah. But what, what, what happens most of the time? I, I saw that and I said, oh, that's how I probably worked for the first five or six years I was in SEO. It's just yeah, I mean, if you only present good news, you're not presenting uh, opportunities to present corrective action. So you got to paint a realistic picture in your reporting. And be, because you want people motivated to act. And if you, if you present, hey, here is our problem. Here's how we solve it. Here's what you need to do. They are going to act on that. And yeah. you're the person providing those recommendations and that increases your value. So, you know what I really liked about you, you had this tip. Um, you said, if you want, you really want to get people to take action with reports and one trigger to do that is to use the word because a lot. Because, yep. I love that tip. Why did you, what does it, what, in your own well, words, what does that mean? Yeah. So I, I'll, I, I need to, uh, just make sure I'm giving credit to the appropriate people. The reporting okay. <laughs> uh, reporting guide uh, was written by uh, a talented woman named Haley who works at Moz. Uh, okay. Although I fully support everything in the guide, uh, yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. I've done a, I think I've done a whiteboard Friday too on reporting. You so did, yes. not totally <laughs> out of my ballpark here. Uh, so because I've actually read studies about this, because as a psychological trigger, if you use the words because or so, people believe that you are much more credible and are much more likely to take action on what you say. That's such good this, advice. And this have. is because of triggers in your head. So we want to use these. I love it. Um, all right. So the other, the other bit of misinformation that happens on reports all the time is that you'll make it a site audit. You'll make it another site audit yeah. within your report. Uh, good advice. Is that a good advice? <laughs> I mean, site audits are fine. Uh, you know, delivered once a year or so. I yeah. typically do a site audit for Moz about once a year. Uh, but what people really want, <laughs> I, I've seen, I mean, even some of Moz's own reporting, every every site, every 
SEO reporting I've seen, like these are your 404 errors, these are all your <laughs> blah, blah, blah. No one cares. That what, yeah. what they want is what do I need to do right now to fix a problem? What do I need to do to solve for an opportunity? And generally, I, I like to limit it to three things, maybe more if the, if the team you're working with is overly ambitious. Uh, but do this, this, and this by the time we meet next month, and we'll be good. I love it. And then the, the other big, this happens to us all the time. We're in local, and everybody wants to know their rankings. And it's an yep. impossible chore in local because – Proximity is such a big factor. Yep. And you have a great piece of advice to look at. I think you call it ranking indexes. Is, it, is that right? So you look at basically a group of terms and how, mm -hmm. they, how they modulate. I think that's a great bit of advice. How do you, how do you report rankings in, in an effective way on a report? Yeah, so uh, Moz, there's a few ways to do this. Uh, my favorite... Uh, Moz also owns Stat Analytics, we which use is it. that's yeah, that's our go-to inter enterprise enterprise rank tracking. And uh, Stat has some great uh, grouping and tagging tools to group your keywords, and then you can look at share of voice and things like that. And it lets you track hundreds or thousands of keywords at a time and your over overall visibility in the industry. Right. For example, uh, with Moz. I tag all my keywords with the word SEO. They're a group. So I can see how Moz ranks for all SEO terms up and down. And it gives us a sense of our, our strength in that way. Local SEO, uh, interesting challenge because like you said, proximity is such an important factor and it can change. I think some of the uh, uh, tools out there, uh, Moz is creating some new proximity tools, which are kind of interesting. Local Falcon, I think that's the name of the company, has some interesting Local proximity uh, proximity tools. But yeah, local is a is a completely uh, different beast where you're more looking at geographic coverage as opposed to uh, huge. Because at local, depending on the size of the firm, you may only care about twelve keywords versus you know uh, ten thousand. But Bingo, yeah, yeah. Right. a different beast. Well, this is. Uh... One of my favorite parts of the show, which is that right before I get on with one of Greg's friends, he sends me anywhere from one to three oddball questions. And from he Greg. Me, ah. He gives me no context and no <laughs> time no time to research what this is all about. Yeah. And so uh, with that in mind, here is Greg Gifford's question for Cyrus Shepard. Uh, he said, ask him about the time he wore a toupee for two weeks. Ha! Uh, so... So, yeah, so I'm, I'm bald, uh, uh, but there's a time a few years ago when I just started shaving my head, uh, I bought a toupee and I wasn't expecting much, uh, just for shits and giggles. Uh, and it actually looked pretty good. And I, so I wore it, I wore it to MozCon, didn't tell anybody. Just like, I'm not, it's obviously a toupee, but I'm not gonna say a word, just to screw with people. Uh, so I wore it for, and everybody was too polite to say anything. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, some people cl claim they knew afterwards, but I don't know. Excellent social experiment, I like it. Um, yeah. Well, good, well, Cyrus, how do, how do people get in touch with you if they wanna learn more about what you're doing, what, what's going on with Moz? How, how uh, so most, most people follow me on Twitter. Uh, it's, I, I'll, I'll be honest, ever since uh, COVID-19 and being locked down at home, I haven't been as enthusiastic about tweeting. Uh, so many world events going on. It's, it's, sometimes, uh, it's, it's sometimes hard to know what to say at the appropriate times. Uh, but uh, so much of SEO happens you know, on Twitter and it's, it's a great place and it's our lifeblood. Uh, I, in addition to working with Moz, I also have my own SEO company called Zippy where we're building some next generation SEO software. We're building some really cool things. So I'm hoping maybe by September, October, we have something to show the world. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I got. Well, I'll be sure to check them out. Uh, Cyrus, it was such a pleasure to have you on the show and uh, really looking forward to MozCon and Everything yeah. you have in store for the rest of the year. I, I still have half a beer left, so. Well, let's do it. Let's do a final, uh, a final cheers. Right, cheers. Cool cheers. And thanks again for coming on.
I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you around at one of these covers when we can travel again. I, all right. So looking forward to it. We'll do fist bumps and hugs. Love it. All, all right. right. Hey, thanks you. for having me. Bye bye. Well,